The United States' aging population has made Parkinson's disease increasingly prevalent, with symptoms that can include tremors, muscle stiffness, and an inability to move. A new study compares two widely accepted forms of treatment for the disease and measures the benefits and risks of each, even for older patients. After Richard Seeger was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease nearly two decades ago, his ability to move rapidly deteriorated. I couldn't get up basically from a seat. I had to bounce and bounce and bounce. So I turned around and finally got my legs, my knees locked. He volunteered for a study comparing two types of treatment, one called deep brain stimulation, where electrodes are implanted in the brain, the other called best medical therapy, which involves medication and therapy. What was unique about this study is that we included older people. Parkinson's patients are often older, but older people are often excluded from research studies. 25% of our population in our study were age 70 and older. Richard was chosen at random to undergo surgery. Afterwards, doctors adjusted the electrical stimulation to control his symptoms. He turned it on, and I tell you what, they couldn't hardly believe it. I was walking around, not shaking. The study found six months later, patients who received deep brain stimulation were able to function normally nearly five hours longer than those who received best medical therapy. The patients also reported better quality of life, no matter what their age. The fact that our older patients did almost as well was uh, a very surprising and positive finding for us. But the study did find deep brain stimulation patients had a higher risk of complications. The take home message from this study is that each patient should weigh the benefits and risks of undergoing deep brain stimulation, but that being older and having Parkinson's does not exclude a person from being appropriate for receiving this treatment. Richard Seeger would be the first to agree with that. And phase two of this study will focus on the placement of the deep brain stimulation implant and look at which sites provide better control of symptoms. Joining me now is Dr. Christopher Duma, a board-certified brain surgeon who performs deep brain stimulation for his patients. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for being here. First of all, why don't you tell us um, how this uh, deep brain stimulator actually works? Well, the history of this is, is fairly interesting. Uh, the neurologists in the, of the old past found that when some patients had a stroke, a certain area of the brain died and they had already been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, their Parkinson's symptoms improved. So a certain area of the brain, if it's not working, will actually cause the symptoms of Parkinson's disease to go away. So what that led to historically in the 1950s and 60s was we used to burn areas of the brain. We actually destroyed areas of the brain. We used uh, techniques which would either freeze the area of the brain or actually literally burn it and destroy that area of the brain, and the patient's tremors would go away and their stiffness and rigidity would improve significantly. So that was felt to be the, uh, the, magic, uh, the magic ticket to fixing Parkinson's disease. It got a little bit ridiculous when you felt that burning an area of the brain was not the right way to go. And so uh, when deep brain stimulation was developed, uh, putting a stimulator in the brain or an electrode in the brain acted as if it were turning off that area of the brain Instead of destroying it by burning it, it just stimulates it and stops it from working. That's how it works. That's fascinating. What has it done for your patients? Well, <clears throat> I've been implanting these since they've been, uh, since they've been FDA approved, and it's been about nine years now. I've mm -hmm. been implanted a good close to 500 patients. And uh, for me, it's been one of the more gratifying surgeries that I do. Um, the patients come in with these horrible symptoms. They've been diagnosed with Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease for a long time. And uh, the uh, light at the end of the tunnel is not, a, is not a very happy one for them. The average Parkinson's patient um, is completely disabled nine years after their diagnosis. And uh, what it's done is it's uh, improved their quality of life, just as this, uh, this uh, study has shown. Mm -hmm. What I've found in my, in my series of patients, it's improved their quality of life, it's uh, inc improved their on times, mm -hmm. and has decreased their need for medications. Now, is this treatment for everyone? Well, it's not for everyone. I mean, we pick very selectively our patients. Patients with severe dementia from Parkinson's disease should not be getting this. 
but I like to implant younger patients mm -hmm. early on in their diagnosis. They do better surgically, they're better surgical candidates to begin with, and uh, they have you know, a, a, a longer time to deal with this disease in the future. So uh, if you can give them better quality of life earlier on, it's, mm -hmm. it's, far, more, um, it's far more gratifying. Now, is this something that uh, can stay with them for decades? Uh, the stimulation, we're, we're putting the stimulators mm -hmm. in, the battery life, just like a heart pacemaker, the battery has a life and it's probably anywhere between two to five years. And what we're doing now is we're just replacing the batteries, the generators. Mm -hmm. So they come in after two to three years or five years uh, for a generator change. And giving these patients back their life. It's a significant change for them. Thank you so much, Dr. Duma. Certainly appreciate you being here. My pleasure. We hope you come back again. When you think health, think IRU.